Hey guys and welcome to Functional Print Friday. Can you guess why we're here? Well, so this is an outdoor dog bed and if you're thinking, does your dog really need a bed for outside? No, probably not. But let me tell you, this dog's a bit spoiled. Um, let's see, how many beds does this dog have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know what, I think he has one in the barn. 10, 10 beds, 11 actually, if we count the one we're fixing. All right, so the problem we have with this is that this piece here that joins these two rods together um, broke in two pieces. And it broke about two weeks ago, and you can see there's already a mud dauber nest in there. Those guys are fast. And just based on where it broke, I'm guessing the rod probably backed out a little bit. I think these went almost all the way to the center, if I remember when I put this together. Um, so it backed out a bit and it just snapped off. But when I assembled this, and that was no more than a few months ago, this is new this year, this material was quite a bit more flexible. Uh, now it is hard and brittle. So clearly these are not UV stable. I don't know what material they are or, well, were. I mean, I guess it's still the same material, but it has been changed by the UV light. Um, it did not hold up. I'm thinking that we're gonna use TPU for this. Uh, we could do this in something stiff and it might hold up. Like maybe, well, ABS, we'd have to paint if we were gonna use it outside. I just don't see any reason not to use TPU for this. I've had really good luck um, using TPU for stuff like this. In fact, I did a previous print with um, some pieces that hold uh, where that trampoline bolts down. Actually, let me walk up there and show you. Okay, so this is a, there's a threaded rod that goes down into uh, concrete pads that I poured here so this trampoline doesn't fly across my yard. And both the cover here for the threaded rod uh, that comes up through this piece here and this piece here that spreads the load out is TPU. And this is pushing at least five years at this point. It might be six. And this stuff is still, I don't know if you can see that deflecting as I push on it. It's still flexible. Yeah, it has yellowed a little bit, um, but it's still flexible. Can you hear it? It's not cracked anywhere. I mean, I have had, this is Sane Smart TPU. I don't know if different brands um, have different um, well, I'm sure the ingredients are going to be a bit different. I don't know if Sane Smart adds anything to make their TPU uh, UV stable or if it's just uh, one of the native properties of the typical blend of TPU, but um, I've had really good luck with it outside. Right, let's get this on the workbench where I can see it better and measure it, and we'll go from there. All right, got it in here on the bench. These rods look like fiberglass to me, and I'm hoping they're a standard size. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that on camera or not, but they are just over five millimeters. So I'm gonna say these are probably five millimeter fiberglass rods. And if we take a look at the entire length of the original piece, it is just shy of 70 millimeters. Um, I don't know what material they originally used for this. I remember this being softer and more flexible when I put this together and we haven't had this this long. It's not like this has been sitting outside for years. We got this months ago and put it together. So it hasn't even had a full season outside. I don't know what material they chose, but it's clearly not the right stuff. And like I mentioned before, I've had really good luck with TPU outdoors. So let's uh, take that into consideration that we're gonna use TPU for this and we want something more robust than the original design. And let's see what we can come up with. All right, and here is the design that I came up with for this. And if you were watching that sped up design footage, you probably noticed this guy originally started as a little bit taller and some thinner sections here on the end. Uh, the section being the, the width between our, our center bore and the edge of the part. And uh, I, I got what, you know, where I thought was done on the design and I, I just sort of pulled back a little bit and looked at it and I thought, man, this is quite a tall part. Uh, with a very small contact patch, it's going to be a real challenge to uh, to print because we do need to print this guy standing up. We have here, if I lop this off, you can see we have these bores in here that don't quite meet. Uh, and that's intentional. That's so that when we insert the fiberglass rods, uh, they don't go past the center point. Each essentially has its own bore 
uh, that it is going into. But uh, again, this is quite a tall piece, and if it was PLA or PETG, I think we'd be okay, but I am a little bit worried about this in TPU. Uh, even with the, the larger contact patch, as I did thicken up these ends and squat this guy down a little bit, uh, this is still gonna stand quite tall as we get up into at least like the upper one third of this print. I'm a little worried that if it flexes at all uh, in the lower portion here or where it attaches to the bed, even with a brim, uh, that we could end up with some shifted layers up here at the top, just with the acceleration of the bed going back and forth or the nozzle crossing uh, the lines of the lower layer. And if this guy shifts and we have, uh, you know, bad layer lines, you know, minor layer shifts uh, up here, it's going to significantly weaken it. I, I could really care less about the aesthetic perspective. Uh, but keeping in mind, uh, we are counting on those layers to stay adhered to each other in this design because our forces are going to be trying to separate those, those layer lines. I can't see any way around it. Uh, the only other thing we could do is maybe print this whole thing uh, as a rectangular section instead and either have some supports in those bores or just go for it and hope they came out okay. And, you know, realistically, they probably would. Uh, especially if we oversize them a bit, just knowing that we're going to end up with sort of an oblong bore with a little bit of mess up here where the, uh, you know, the bridge would be at the top and we could still probably shove that, that, uh, that fiberglass rod in there. But I want to try it like this. Let's see what happens. I'm going to roll the dice and we'll see if we can get this part to print in TPU standing this proud up on the bed. So let's go give it a try. All right, so this went a lot better than I expected it to. Uh, here was, you know, almost all the way up towards the top of the part where I was most worried about this print, and it is still smooth as glass on the side there. Uh, the acceleration rate looks a little quick to my eye, but this is the default Sane Smart profile that's built right into Prusa Slicer, and it did a great job. Uh, I, di I didn't see any layer shifting or anything on the top here, and it is well adhered to the bed. And in fact, that's actually gonna be an issue here. I tried to get the knife in there and it was not coming off. I mean, I'm sure I could have jammed it in there and risk damaging the bed, but I've shown this trick on the channel before. If you dump just a little bit of IPA on a TPU part on the bed like this and just sort of wet the bottom, it wicks under there and it just magically releases. I mean, I am barely pushing at all. Uh, and if you do feel some resistance, just stop, push a little more IPA under there. And this guy just about falls right off the bed. All right, and our first one is done, and I'm really happy to report that there was no issues printing this guy standing up. I was really worried we were really pushing it uh, with just having a very small contact surface down here and the shape of this just sort of getting bumped around with the nozzle um, or just the acceleration of the bed back and forth might lead to some layer lines up here. But nope, it actually looks really good. Uh, I don't know if we got lucky or not. I guess I'll let you know when I try and print a few more of these. Uh, but let's see if it fits. Uh, it's tight, but that's good. We want it to be tight. I think part of the reason this one broke is not just the material getting brittle, uh, but I think this was all the way up here and it snapped off here. This piece really should have been pressed all the way up into here. It might have still broken, um, but I don't want this to slip on this fiberglass rod preferably. And uh, we can use that Windex trick that I showed you guys in a previous video when you're trying to get a tight fit between uh, plastic or painted surfaces. Uh, so let's see if we can get this guy on here. All right, so all I'm going to do is just shoot some Windex into both sides of this guy. And what that's hopefully going to do is lubricate this a little bit, but then evaporate out. And we should have a nice, uh, a nice grippy um, hold on that. The only time you don't want to do this is if you're pressing like a bare metal surface in because it could potentially rust. And I guess if you're never going to take it out, it probably doesn't matter. But I use Windex like this all the time for... Um, tight fits on, uh, you know, plastic or, or some 3D printed surface to some other 3D printed surf, surface, or in this case, uh, fiberglass or even a painted metal, it works really well for. So let's see if we can get this on. Oh, that is really tight. And <laughs> I think we might've gone through the center. Uh, I should have made a mark uh, as kind of a stop, but let's see if, uh, well, let's see how far we can get the top rod in. Right, you know what, can I feel? Yeah, okay, so we're, we definitely have, man, we're probably right about at the, at the center point. You know, I'm gonna put some Windex on the fiberglass rod too.
Aha, I think we got it. I think what was going on there was um, it was actually airtight because that's sort of like a pressure release sound and then it slipped the rest of the way in. Um, it is bending a little bit more than I expected it to, but you know what? That might be okay. Um, let me get the, the camera in a better angle here. Yeah, you can see what I mean there. It's got quite the bend in it, but you know what? I think that might be okay. I don't see any reason why we couldn't have uh, the material just held in this bend like this all the time, as long as we're still tight up here at the top. And it looks like we are. Uh, let, me, uh, let me print another one. Let's get another one on. All right, second one printed just as easy. So either we got lucky twice or uh, this just uh, isn't much of an issue printing this standing up like I thought it would be. All right, I'm happy with how these came out. I do want to do two more for the other side just so everything matches and to preemptively replace these before they fail. Uh, but I'm not going to hold up the video for that. TPU does take a while to print, and I'm sure you guys can imagine what two more of these is going to look like over here on this side. Uh, so pretty quick, easy video this week. Uh, as always, guys, thanks for hanging out with me in the shop for this design and this video. If this is your first time on the channel, I do a new video like this every single week. It features a 3D print uh, that solves a problem uh, around the shop, around the house, outside. Uh, sometimes they're quick and easy like this. Sometimes they are much more involved and even span a couple of videos. Uh, if you're into that sort of thing, I think this is like the 87th video I've done. So check out my previous videos and you'll probably find something that you're interested in. Um, and if you want to see more videos like this, again, I publish one every single Friday. So uh, if you're into that, hit that subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.